We're going to break down some of these main card fights for UFC 148. How's it going, Jason? Hey, good morning. Not too bad. How you doing, Mark? Doing good. So let's start at the uh, bottom of the card. Let's talk about the uh, Chad Mendez fight. Oh, Chad Mendez and Cody McKenzie. Oh, Cody um, coming off the Ultimate Fighter shows, right? Right. And then uh, Mendez, same thing, but he's already ranked. You know, um, he's coming off, he's out of Team Alpha Mel. So I think there's going to be really um competitive fight there. I mean, you know, you, you got to favor Mendez on that fight. But McKenzie has a way of um, finishing opponents, finding a way to win. So I think, uh, personally, I think this is going to be a really exciting fight uh, once it hits the floor or attempts to hit the floor. So, yeah, we um, were uh, breaking down some of the uh, fight odds last night um, with a bookie. Uh, um, big favorite here, Chad Mendez. I think he's the biggest favorite on the entire card. Who'd you like? Well, that makes sense. I mean, you got to go with uh, Mendez. I mean, he's he's ranked high in the world. He, um, you know, coming from Team Alpha Male, they produce really, really tough and great fighters. So, uh, McKenzie, this is going to be a big step up for him and let him know, you know, it's his stepping, his way to get into that top ten. I mean, he's sitting on a 13-2 and two record, which is a really nice record. So, yeah, I mean, it should be a really great fight. But, again, I, you know, you got to lean towards M- Mendez. Okay, and moving up the card, we uh, we'll take a look here at the Kung Lee versus Patrick Cote fight. What do you think about this one? Okay, now that's going to be a really, really, really fun fight. I'm looking forward to this one. Um, I fought Kung. Um, Kung's tough. Got some really nice kicks, and he uses his kicks to set up his hands, uh, which is a little bit different. A lot of times, fighters use their hands to set up kicks. He has a very uh, very neat style, a decent takedown defense. Cote, um, he's been around for a minute, you know, he's fought Ortiz, and, you know, he's been around, you haven't seen a lot of them lately, but that right there has the potential to be a really good firefight, you know, conflicting styles and whatnot. Um, you know, honestly, I kind of favor um, Cote on this just because of the experience in the, in the octagon in the cage. So I, I think there's a good chance you're going to see a lot of blood in this fight. You know, uh-huh. You got Kung Lee coming off that loss to <clears throat> to Silva, but again, yeah, I just I, I give the edge to Cote. I, I think he'll he'll come out aggressive, be able to um, close the distance, um, avoid those heavy kicks of Kung's, and be able to do the damage and take the fight where he needs to take the fight. Okay, man, and uh, Cote is the uh, favorite in this one, um, so Kung's. An underdog, not much of an underdog though. So uh, for sure, we're going to see some kicks, some punches. It's going to be exciting, right? Yeah. Well, as I said, um, <laughs> I think it's going to be a firefight. You know, Tong likes to keep it standing. He doesn't really show a ground game. I mean, he did. Um, he was a fairly impressive wrestler in college, so he has a wrestling background. But as I said, he likes to keep keep it standing, and he's very flashy with his kicks, especially his um, spinning kicks. Cote, you know, is a more well-rounded fighter, and, you know, you're looking at a combined of 24 total fights for Cote, and versus Kung with a total of nine MMA fights. Um, I just think Cote is going to be a ring general here, be able to control the ring, and be able to move the fight to where he wants it versus letting Kung control the fight and keep it at a ranged affair. You know, I think they'll, they'll exchange leather, but at the end of the day, I think the table's ahead because it's more diverse and more dynamic. Hey, man, hey. cool main event. Uh, what are you <laughs> liking this one? Forrest Griffin, Tito Ortiz. All right. This is an awesome, awesome, awesome fight. We were talking about this a little bit last night. Yeah. Um, not only the the fight itself, you got Ortiz is, um, you know, almost a legend in the sport, he's just got into the Hall of Fame, he's been around, he's been at the top of the game, and, you know, he's been, you know, been at low points in his career, too, and he's talking retirement. That's what makes this fight so exciting. If Ortiz wasn't talking of retirement, eh, okay, it's just a really great rematch. You know, these guys have had neck-to-neck fights in the past, 
and you know both of them splitting up, splitting a win each. So this becomes one of those rubber matches that UFC likes to have and is really favorable on pay per views. Um, Forrest, <laughs> he's one of my favorite fighters too. I mean, what's great about both of these guys is as fun as they can be in the ring. You just want to hear what they're going to say afterwards. Their antics post fight, which is just a blast. Forrest, you never know what he's going to say. Tito's somewhat predictable. Tito wins. <clears throat> He's gonna come out. He's gonna challenge somebody. He has to. If he he be he be man, he's gonna call somebody out. This is what Tito does. He markets. Um, Forrest, on the other hand, there's been a question of does he want to retire? Where's he at in his life and his career? Does he really want to keep fighting? Um, you know, he had had a couple of tough losses, but he has had some great wins also. Um, believe it or not. Um, Special love forces to death, and we're friends. And Tito, I've always respected. We've been friends too. Um, I got Tito to win this fight. I think Tito's going to be able to nullify the, the striking, get him in a corner, and work his ground to pound. Um, edge Tito just because Forrest, you know, he's not sure where he's at right now. Okay, man, good stuff. Uh, moving on up, we got the main event next, man. This uh, this fight everyone's talking about right now. Chael Sonnen, Anderson Silva, two. All right. Who do you think wins this? We'll, we'll turn we'll reverse the rules for a second. Okay, I would say um, early stoppage, Anderson Silva. I think he's going to finish it in the first or second round. But if that doesn't happen, I see Sonnen winning decision. <coughs> I almost agree with you. I think I got Anderson to win win this by knockout in the second round. Uh, I didn't know that Silva was injured in their last fight, going into the fight. He's 100% healthy is what, he, what what's everybody saying, what he's saying. Chell Sun then controlled the crap out of him for four rounds and was abruptly finished in the middle of the fifth. You got to do a little bit of the math here and understand where Silva was in his career at that time two years ago. He just had two two fights where he was accused of showboating, not finishing, toying with his opponents, and he was very unfavorable, namely to the American audience. You know, so they line him up with Chael Sonnen, and they put him over in Oakland. And you know what do you do? Is it in Anderson's best interest to go out there and finish him in one or two rounds, or to toy with him? No, not at all, because you know he's going to get more heat from from Dana and the UFC, and you know whatever they say, everybody's going to tend to flow with. So to keep himself marketable, I really think that he purposely, um, you know, took his time in that fight, kept himself in safe positions where. He, he looked threatened, but I think he was composed. He added in the injury factor, um, you know, but at first I think he um, hit showboat, but he baited him for, for four and a half rounds and finished him when he was ready to. And on, it was almost like on cue, as soon as he wins, you hear Joe Rogan, oh my God, what an amazing finish. You know, now, here, here we go. Anderson Silva, he's back, he's the man. And there hasn't been a question about the showboating or anything since. It, everything got forgotten. All that matters now is he just miraculously came back from this horrible going to lose this fight defeat and, and finishes and retains his title. Makes him very marketable and sets up this fight to be, you know, huge. So, with that being said, I got Anderson Silva knocking him out at will by the second round. I mean, I could be wrong, but... I really think, think he's angry. I think he's pissed off, and, and I think you're going to see a really focused Anderson that's looking to finish and hurt somebody. Yeah, for sure, man. And let's talk about him being pissed off. Um, <clears throat> a lot of guys say uh, you can't take anger into the cage, but you just look at the Diaz boys. They're always pissed off. They're pissed off at the world. Just talk about going into the cage um, and that state of mind. Well, with the Diaz boys, it's a little bit different. The Diaz boys, they have to be angry at you to fight you. You know, they gotta. Some people, you gotta create this rage or a reason to go after somebody. Um, the Diaz boys, Nick, namely Nick, he's cussing, he's yelling, he's screaming. I remember um, <laughs> backstage when he was fighting Diego Sanchez, and we're at the Hard Rock, 
and they had this big curtain separating both, you know, the red and blue corners. And you hear Nick running back and forth, mother effer this, motherfucker this, oh, I'm kill him, mother. And all of a sudden, just like out of some Aerosmith video, he pulls his head to a curtain, I'm gonna fucking kill you, you're fucking dead, and pulls back out. And he does this two or three times, and he's just throwing this tantrum. <laughs> We're trying to get ready for our bites, and I'm sitting there going, oh my gosh, that's unreal. But that's Nick Diaz. That's how he, he, he gets charged up for a fight. Generally speaking, after the fight's over, Oh, hold on, my cat's going to fall down. Um, after the fight's over, you know, he, he's pretty cool with people. You know, unless, you know, you get in a fight with them at the hospital. <laughs> but, you know, um, Anderson, he's never been angry. You've never once heard the man angry or unfocused. You know, he's pretty nonchalant, kind of laid back, you know, for, for being a world champion. And, you know, he, he's confident. Right now, I think he's truly upset. He's going in here hot-headed, he's focused, and when you're at this level, I really think that translates to a tougher, more aggressive camp. A camp with the fine edge where he's going to go in there and really, truly try to put some pain on um, on Cho. You know, I, you know, I really don't think that the anger and being mad is going to affect him. Okay, man, thanks for uh, doing this. Do you want to promote anything? Um... Notice Chemical Imbalance. Yeah, this is another one of my sponsors. Um, my my welterweight fighter, Tim the Beast East, I'm out of here in Fresno. He's fighting amateur right now. Um, he got the kickboxing show coming up and here shortly, and he'll be going pro directly afterwards. He owns Chemical Chemical Imbalance. You can catch him on Facebook. Uh, look for big things. Dana White. Watch out, we're going to get him up to 5, 6, and 0, something like that. And you're going to be looking for him on the Ultimate Fighter Show here in the future, within a year or two. And he's a great prospect and a good friend. Um, yeah, <laughs> watch out. Awesome, Jason. Thanks for doing this. Right on, Mark. Thank you very much for the time.